Hi, my name is Marty Michowski, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about my book, Don't Blame the Mud, and then I'm going to read it. This is a book that you can use with your children to teach them about temptation and sin. Two concepts that are abstract for children to understand, but in the story, I think they'll become clear. So I hope you enjoy it. And then, if you're interested, in the back of the book, there is a section for parents. It's called Helping Your Children Understand Sin and Helping Your Children Understand the Gospel. So if you'd like to get a copy of this book and use that as a short devotional for your children, you can. So I hope you enjoy it. Here it is. Don't blame the mud. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 My troubles began one spring day as I was walking home from school. The rain had stopped and the sun was shining. As I jumped over mud puddles, I could hear my mom's parting words echo in my head. Max, don't get those school clothes dirty. Come home and change before you play. I looked down at my new school uniform. It was still clean. Whew! I should have kept walking down the sidewalk, but the trail that ran along the creek looked so much more fun. The muddy path seemed to call out to me that day. I can keep my clothes clean, I thought, and I can catch frogs and skip stones. Soon, I forgot all about Mom's warning. I walked on logs. I hopped from rock to rock over puddles and patches of mud. I dodged the mud splashes. Missed me, I shouted as I ducked a huge one. Mom will never know I came home this way, I thought. Then, all of a sudden, a frog jumped across the path. I ran after the frog, but tripped on a stick. I grabbed hold of a tree branch. I hung on tight. The branch broke my fall and swung me over onto a mossy log. Oh, that was a close call, I thought as I let go of the branch. It sprang back into place, back on the other side of the sea of mud. Now, I was trapped. Everywhere I turned, the mud blocked my way. My only hope was to make it to a large flat rock in the middle of the muck. I backed down the log to get a good start, then I took off and ran. But just as I jumped, my foot slid and slipped. I missed the rock, I fell toward the mud, and this time there were no branches to save me. When I hit the mud, it made a huge splash. The cold slime soaked through to my skin. Oh no, I shouted as I sprang to my feet to try to get out of the mud. As soon as I stood, I heard my mom's voice calling for me from up on the road. Max, where are you? She shouted. I'm in trouble, I thought. I shook the mud from my hands and stomped my feet on the path, but there was no way to get rid of that mud. It clung to my pants and my shirt and my socks and my shoes. The mud smelled worse than dead fish. Now what am I going to do, I wondered as mom walked down the road. She was still calling for me. I must get out of these clothes before mom finds out, I thought. So I scrambled up the steps to my house. I went in through the back door and snuck up to my room. I made it, phew. I kicked off my shoes and took off my muddy clothes. I wiped my face on my shirt. I threw on clean clothes as fast as I could and stuffed the smelly uniform under my bed. It's not my fault, I thought. I was doing fine till I slipped and fell. My clothes were all clean till the mud splashed on me. It's all the mud's fault. That's easy to see. I pulled a book off the shelf as mom arrived home. Then I jumped in my bed and pretended to read. The book was upside down and my muddy tracks led straight to my room. Soon mom was knocking on my bedroom door. Come in, I said. My heart was pounding and I was afraid. Max, she said, don't try to fool me. You track mud through the kitchen and down the hall. The footprints lead right to your room. I slowly lowered the book and looked around. My dirty clothes were peeking out from under the bed. There was mud everywhere. It seemed to be laughing at me. Get your muddy uniform out from under your bed, Mom ordered. Toss it into the washer, then go take a shower. 
We'll talk after you're clean. I didn't say a word as I pulled out the ball of clothes. The mud on my pants and my shirt shouted one word, guilty. Once in the bathroom, the mirror revealed a swipe of mud on my cheek and a clot in my hair. I had mud on my neck, my shoulders, and my chest. No wonder she figured it out, I said. Then I jumped in the shower to scrub it away. After my shower, I didn't feel clean. Somewhere down deep inside, the mud seemed to stay. I put on clean clothes and slowly walked down the hall. Max, my dad called. Come into the living room. As I turned the corner, I saw him standing with mom, holding up my muddy shoes. What happened today? He asked. I took a deep breath and tried to explain. It's not my fault that I slipped and I fell. My clothes were clean till the mud splashed on me. It's the mud's fault. It wasn't me. Dad shook his head and said, Max, try that again. This time, don't blame the mud. Mom reminded you when you left for the day not to get dirty. You have no one to blame but yourself. I knew Dad was right. I was to blame. I lowered my head. Mom put her arm around me as I spoke through my tears. I showered and scrubbed till the mud was all gone, but down deep it still feels like it's there. Max, my mom said as she looked into my eyes, the mud you still feel is guilt because you didn't obey. God says that we all try to go our own way, not God's way. That's what sin is. We think doing what we want will make us happy. But instead, we feel sad and bad inside. Only God can wash away the mud in our hearts. Dad went on to explain, We are all born with the stain of sin, so we all disobey. That's why God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross in our place. If you turn from your own way, your sin, and believe in Jesus, your sin and guilt will be washed away, and God will give you a new clean heart, and his spirit will help you turn from sin and go God's way. I had heard that story of Jesus a hundred times, but there, in that moment, God helped me to see that Jesus died on the cross for me, and only he can make me clean. Deep down inside, I knew it was true, and that God was calling me to turn from my sin and trust in Jesus, so I closed my eyes and began talking to God. God, I disobeyed mom and lied to my dad, I confessed. I believe you sent Jesus to die for my sins. I scrubbed off the mud. It went down the drain. But deep in my heart, the stain still remains. Please forgive me. Right there in a flash, God turned my sadness to joy. God forgave all my sins and washed me clean. I felt brand new inside. My sad tears gave way to a big smile. Then I told my parents the true story. They heard all my sins, forgave everyone. They both gave me a hug. The worst day turned into the best day. Phew! The mud was all gone, and so was my shame. My heart was washed clean and deep inside. I knew God was now living with me. And that's the end of Don't Blame the Mud. I hope you enjoyed the reading of my book, Don't Blame the Mud. And before I go, I'd like to tell you about another little booklet that I have called Leading Your Child to Christ. It's put out by New Growth Press, and you can get it at newgrowthpress.com. It helps parents know how to share the gospel with their children and how to tell what are the signs to know that my son or daughter are genuinely saved. So if you're wondering about that as your children get just a bit older, I would encourage you to get a copy of this. I think it'll be a help. Well, that's all for now. God bless.